somebody's responding. You got to give God to all today. To all, to all, to all, to all, God. Give him everything you got.
had a plan for my life and, and, and the enemy had a plan also. How many of you know that there are two plans for your life? Glory to God's name. And uh, God sent me all the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, up north in the cold. And uh, to my surprise, uh, Brother Derek knows this, um, God sent me to Central State and I, I came there, um, thought I, God wanted me to play basketball. And I didn't know God had a different agenda. Uh, he wanted two things he wanted to pull out of me. Number one, he wanted to give me a, a godly woman. Uh, a young lady who uh, received the gift of the Holy Spirit. How old were you? Five years old. She received the gift of the Holy Spirit five years old in her mother's living room. Amen. How many of you know you ain't too young to receive God? Amen. Amen. And so God gave me a godly woman who knew who she was in God and God connected me with her. And then the second thing God pulled out of me was my call to ministry. Amen. On the campus of Central State University. Listen, for you people telling me, listen, you send your child to college and I'm telling you they're going to get more than an education. You just got to believe God. Is that right? Amen. And so that's the journey. And so now that we're past first base, I believe that we're going on to second base. And I think we're almost family. Is that right? So now you know a little bit about me. And my wife and I are the youth pastors at Greater Bethlehem Temple uh, in Columbus, Ohio. I've been serving there for now, uh, coming up on 10 years. Uh, I, I got there in 2009. Amen. Well, our pastor is District Elder David L. Z. Norman. Um, who we give God glory for today. Amen. So now, um, God bless all of the elders, the preachers, the ministers that make this great ministry what it is. Clap for them. Come on. I told you, I'm only going to preach 15 minutes. I promise you, it doesn't have to be long to be strong. Is that okay? You know? Now, I am from the old school. If it's all night, it's all right. I knew I wasn't going to get no amen. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Amen. And so, um, we thank God for that. Now, I don't know all names, but I will say this. We thank God for Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Uh, so I don't want nobody to get mad at me. Amen. I thank God for, for you know, John, Paul, and all of y'all. You know, everybody in protocol that I don't even know the call. God bless all of you all. Clap for everybody. Come on, one last time. Amen. To the Word of God. Let's go. Let's go to the Word of God. Second Kings. Anybody want to go to the Word of God? Second Kings, amen, and if I forgot anybody, please charge it to my head and not my heart. My heart is to do the will of him who sent me, amen. Amen, as it is our custom at the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church in Columbus, Ohio, please stand if you are able for the reading of God's holy word, amen. I promise you we don't have long reading today, amen. I believe my friend is gonna put it up there, amen. Second Kings, amen. Hey, that's, that's how you know the whole Bible, Pastor. I've been, listen, I've been watching y'all live stream and I'm looking like this man know the whole Bible. No, I know you do, but now I do too. It's right up there. You can laugh in church. Is that okay? 2 Kings, chap, uh, 2 Kings 13. Let's go to chapter 13, verse 20. Amen. I'll read in your hearing. And it reads like this, and Elijah died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at first of the year. Verse 21 reads like this, and it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the men into the specter of Elisha. They took men and they had them to guard where Elijah's body was. And when the man was let down onto Elijah's dead body and touched the bones of Elijah's dead body, he revived. Wait a minute. Hold on. And stood up on his feet. You missed it. Uh, and it came to pass. This, uh, you know, hermeneutical principles and hermeneutics would tell us that this happened. And it came to pass, hear me. And they were burying a man. This man had died on the battlefield. And they were getting ready to throw him in a tomb. And 
behold, they spied a band of men to watch over the said tomb, and they cast the man into the specter of Elisha. All right, Elisha's dead, and he's there. And when the man was let down on Elijah, and he touched Elijah's bone, he was revived. Somebody say revived. revived. And stood up on his feet. Run over with me very quickly. I want to marry these texts for you. Isaiah chapter 10. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 10 and uh, uh, verse 27. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you're still looking, can you say wait on me? Amen. I know, I know, yes. I know, honey, we're going to wait on you, I promise you. Isaiah 10, glory, you got it? All right, I want you to see it now. I don't want you to just hear me read it, but I want you to read it for yourself so you know I'm not a lying wonder, okay? The Bible says, and it shall come to pass. Oh, man, I heard that somewhere. In that day that his burden shall be taken away off of thy shoulder. God told me to tell you, number one, while you're standing for five seconds, he said, it, it shall come to pass that burdens are about to be lifted off of your shoulders. Oh, God, I'm glad somebody other than the lights are responding. Listen, I, I'm going to prophesy this morning, and I hope you just catch it and receive it. The burdens are about to be lifted off of your shoulder. Uh, and it shall be taken away from off of thy shoulder. Uh, but number two, it says, and his yoke from off of thy neck. Listen, some of you have been dealing with a yoke of sickness, a yoke of financial stronghold, a yoke of whatever it is in your family. They like to come and play spades and get drunk, whatever. Listen, whatever the yoke is, God said, it's coming off of your neck this morning. All right? The yoke shall be destroyed because of the what? Let's do it again. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Preach it, preach it. Sound good already. Pray for me, sir. Uh, this morning, I, I'm going to talk to you very quickly. I know you have a thing, no talk on power. And I believe power has been being released every Sunday for the preachers that have came and the preachers that are coming after me. Um, I, I'm just the young afterglow, and so uh, today I just want to make a deposit into your life of a revelation that I received, um, I believe it was two or three weeks ago. My wife and I uh, were preaching, I was running revival in upstate Wisconsin, and I preached uh, Friday night, um, I, I, I can't even remember the sermon, um, but then I preached, um, I met a man that Friday night, a Latino man. And a pastor out of Wisconsin, a very powerful church, Latino church, um, by the name of Pastor Omar Ortiz. And I was preaching a sermon entitled, What Doesn't Make Sense Makes Miracles. That all throughout the Bible, you will see people that will do things that I, I, out of the ordinary to you and I, it, it, it would astonish you and I. And, and even to our finite minds, sometimes we, we really wouldn't have obeyed the word of God back then because it was so extreme. But, but how many of you know when God asks you to do something, first of all, it's out of the ordinary. You know, oh, okay, y'all ain't gonna help me. When God says to bless them that curse you, y'all real say, but for me, listen, that really don't make sense. You know, uh, there are some things that even, you know, you know, Peter was, he saw him in the middle of a storm and Peter was looking and he said, listen, that looked like you, but if it's you, tell me to come. Now Peter began to walk on something that was not supposed to sustain him. Yeah, that's a whole other sermon. But, but, but what I'm trying to tell you is God will have you do things that don't make sense. But in the end, they'll make miracles. All right? And so I was there, and this thought came to me. And so I'm going to preach this sermon uh, from this thought that I formed at that church. And hundreds of people came, and they were healed. And I had an interpreter. We were speaking in different tongues and languages. And, you know, I needed an interpreter up until I started speaking in tongues. Oh. Y'all ain't with me. See, when you when you get into the Holy Spirit, listen, the, when I was speaking in tongues, they may not know what I was saying, but their spirits connected with what I was saying. And my wife can attest, the whole church lit up, and, and the fire and the power of God showed up, and people were saying, and we had a wonderful time, and, you know, God talked to me at the office. He said, listen, he said, I don't want you to leave your anointing just here. I said, what do you mean, God? He said, I don't want you to leave this place and just leave your anointing. And so I want to give you this sermon this morning. Write this down if you're taking notes. Those that are studious, don't die with your anointing. Yeah. 
All right. I believe this church is going to great places. I've been praying and seeking God for the direction of where he wanted me to aim this this, this sermon. And, 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 you know, God really showed me uh, a, a spectacular uh, renovation. He showed me a spectacular, super exponential growth that's going to take place. And there's, there's seemingly going to be uh, a, a, a educational process that will be set up or has already been set up that will cause people to not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Am I in the Bible? Right. That's going to cause everyone in this room that is attached to this ministry to grow. But God said, this is what's going to take place. You will have wisdom, you will have education, but he said, listen, tell them if they don't carry my anointing with them, he said, the process will be impeded. Wow. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Come on, preach. All right, and so let's go to this. Um, there are three ways, write this down. There are three ways to get the anointing, and then we're going to go up in a storm and get out of here. There are three ways, and then I'm going to come back to the seventh. There are three ways to get the anointing. All right? Out of those three ways come seven different anointings. All right? Now, these seven anointings, through study, all right, through study, God has revealed to me that in some way or another, you fit into these seven anointings. Amen. And if you receive what I'm telling you this morning, you will latch on and allow one of these anointings to work in your life, and you will see, you will see miracles. I'm talking about notable miracles. How many know when you obey God, you receive and you see miracles? Our church back home, and I'll, and I'll get into this in a, in a minute, and I have about 13 minutes left, and we're gonna go up. I, I, my church back home, we were in need of some things, and the Lord spoke to me, and he gave me a word, and I had a vision, you know, I had a vision. Y'all pray for me, I'm a little weird, you know, you gotta pray for the gifted. But I had a vision, and I, I saw, like, people running up to the altar with envelopes. You know, I saw people run up to the envelopes, and in the vision, you know, um, with no manipulation, I was reading the envelopes, and I could see a thousand dollars on the envelope. And we had been praying and asking God to give us a new church door. We needed a door, you know, we needed our baptism pool fix. We needed different things at the church. And so I went to my pastor and, and you know, I said, Pastor, I really wasn't going to tell you this, but, but you know, I had a vision about what I saw. And so I told him the vision and then he came back to me a couple weeks ago. He said, I want you to tell the church. All right. And so I got up and told the church, I said, church, this is what the Lord showed me. And they, 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 I saw people running up and then it was what happened afterwards. So it wasn't the giving, but it was what happened afterwards. The people's lives seemingly took a turn. Like I could go inside people's houses in the vision and I could see the businesses turning around, going from the red to the black. I've seen people going to seminary getting degrees when, when uh, previous leaders told them it wasn't necessary. I saw people being healed. I've seen people being delivered. I mean, I mean, people that have been dealing with issues that we don't even talk about in church. You know, the, 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 the horrible stuff. And I saw them weeping at the altar. And I said, God, what is this? Came out the vision. And God said, listen. He said, when you put deposit in, you notably receive a harvest. All right, let me give you this before we get into this. Don't ever judge a man's seed if you don't know his harvest. I don't know why the preacher got a big house. I don't know why he got a car. I don't know why she got why she got a husband. She ain't even nice. Listen, you don't know. You don't know the seed she put in the ground. You don't know the praise that she put up. You don't ever judge a person's seed if you've not seen their uh -oh. Don't judge their harvest if you've not seen their seed. And so I told it. We came back two weeks later. Would you know it? People came into our church with envelopes, with $1,000. In one service, we raised $25,000, and this was just a month ago. We got the doors of the church fixed, pool, everything, put new paint on the wall. What am I trying to tell you? When you obey God and you trust the anointing that's in you, it don't have to be about money. You can be healed by trusting God. You understand? He'll make your baby dad come back and stop tripping. Y'all don't want to talk to me. He'll bless it. He'll make everything all right. You've been chasing him down for child support. He will make everything. You ain't got to get on Instagram and Snapchat and complain about it. He will make everything. Listen, we ain't just singing that song sooner or later, it'll turn in my 
my favor. You got to believe this thing, Zion. Huh? Amen. So let's go. Let's go. Out of the three anointings comes seven. Seven. And I wrote these down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Here it comes. There are seven, seven layers to this anointing. All right? So let's go. Let's go. The first one, the first layer is the Christos anointing. C-R-E-S-T-O-S. -E Christos. C-R-E-S-T-O-S. -E Christos anointing. Uh, what's the Christos anointing? I'm, actually, I'm glad you asked, Mother. The Christos anointing, it is what is known as the Christ anointing. Ah, yes, God. It is the anointing of the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Leave it alone, but listen, sometimes you have to know. You can't just know God through your mama. You can't just know Jesus through your daddy. Oh, well, my grandmother is a mother in Zion. Listen, no, 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 no. She suffered to know who he is. You got to study the Bible also to know who he is. And so the Christos anointing is an anointing that will give you a revelation in the time of trouble. It is a revelation that when you are in the car, if the Christos anointing will rise up on you when somebody comes over in your lane and you're in the car and you're almost wrecked, but you're saying, Jesus, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. That's the Christos anointing. Anybody ever did that? Jesus, help me get back in my lane. Now, some of us said other words, but we're gonna ignore you today. Is that all right? The Christos anointing is a revelation of who Jesus is. Uh, sometimes you will face tests and trials in your life, and you don't really know how it's going to work it out. But when your children come to you with the issue, you say, baby, it's going to be all right in the morning. And that is because you are trusting on the Christos anointing, that God is healing. God is financial breakthrough. God is revelation. God is everything. Need because I have the revelation of the Christos. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The second anointing, write this down, and then we'll step out of Bible class, is the Messiah anointing. Mm. Ah, yeah. I feel it building. M A S H I A C. M A S H I A C. The Messiah anointing. Ah, the Mishiach anointing. The Mishiach anointing is, 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 is a powerful anointing. Come, 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 come here, uh, son. Very quickly, come in a hurry. I want to show them something. God bless you, sir. The Mishiach anointing, stand right here so they can see you. A powerful young man. God bless you. The Mishiach anointing, write this down. It is a hiding anointing. Step back a little bit. I want to show them this so that them over here in the balcony can see you. The Mishiach is a hiding anointing. The Mishiach is a hiding anointing. It is anointing that um, God will hide you until everything God has for you is released. Uh, okay, uh, Psalms 91 puts it like this. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God. Come on, let's go to the Bible, all right? He who dwelleth. And so the Messiah anointing is a hiding anointing that God will step in, in front of you that when you are embarrassed, when you are disappointed, when you are dealing with hurt, when you are dealing with shame, the Messiah anointing will step in front of you. And watch this why you have the barbecue and your family talking about you. The Messiah anointing will rise up and say, touch not. Y'all don't want to have church. My anointing and do my prophet no harm. The Messiah anointing will hide you in the time of trouble. It is the anointing that rose up on David when Saul was trying to kill him and he went to the cave of Adunam. And the Messiah anointing will hide you from every arrow. It will hide you from every song. It will hide you from the witches on your job that really don't like you. The Messiah anointing it will hide you from your baby mama. It will hide you in the time of trouble. Somebody shout hallelujah. in front of you. Yeah. And while you're serving God, I'm going to need help here. I'm going to need help here. I need about 10 people to just shout glory. Glory! Right, thank you. I feel your help now. And so, uh, the Messiah anointing, I'm going to 
to stay here so long, but it will help you. Have you ever been in a place where you've been helping somebody and you've been serving them, and you know, whatever a capacity, whether it's your family or your job or, or whatever it is, and they really ain't feeling you, but all you want to do is serve. You don't want no title. You don't want the microphone. You don't want a position. And then while serving them, listen, you have a pure heart glory to God, and while you're serving them, they're taking out arrows and forming them and shooting javelins. Y'all don't want to talk. Okay, maybe it's just David in the Bible. They went and got David. Listen, they went and got David not because David had a devil, but because the leader David was serving had a devil. And David had a gift to play the harp. And David would come and play the harp. But watch this. The leader got jealous of David on his job. And while David is soothing him and canceling demons, he's throwing javelins at David. Lift your hands and receive this. Lift your hands all over this room. I prophesy that the Messiah anointing that will hide you in the time of trouble will keep you from every enemy. It will keep you from every devil. It will keep you from every witch and every warlock. In your life, somebody shout glory. Let's get to this. I promise you, chance we're coming out of Bible study in a minute. Yes. But I feel there's some studious people in the room that need some content. We can shout all day, but we need something to stick to our ribs. Yeah. Later for just coming to church for a dance. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I know demons that dance. Y'all yeah. ain't gonna talk to me. Devils dance. But the word of God is God. And they can't handle this word of God. See, when the word of God goes forth, it'll burn up every demon. It will cancel out every devil. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. And so write this down. Number three, the leopard's anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The leopards anointing. L E A P E R S. The leopards. Well, however you spell it, the leopards anointing. Glory. <laughs> the leopards anointing. Rule number three. The leopards anointing. Watch this, church. It is the ability. Hi, y'all. Well, let's do it this way. Come on back. <laughs> I owe you an offer, man. All right? Pray for me. The leopards anointing. Is the anointing, I feel it. There are about 20 of you in this room that are resting right here. Yeah. You better open your mouth and receive this now. The leopard's anointing is an anointing that when, ah, oh God, somebody, now, now somebody, come on and help me. When you messed up, oh, when you made a mistake, when you fell down and you found yourself back downtown at the bar. The lepers are lonely. When you messed up and you found yourself somewhere you shouldn't have been. The lepers anointing will do this. It is the ability, write this down, that while I'm around people who ain't clean. Huh? Let's see. What it is, this anointing rests on my life when I go to barbecues with my family. When you're around people that ain't really living for God and don't want nothing to do with God. The leopard's anointing, catch it and go crazy. It is the ability to stay clean around dirty people. It is the anointing to stay clean around dirty people. And so you can be around people who are contaminated, they're infected, they have what you know is leprosy in the spirit. See, if it's, if it's outward comportment leprosy, I can deal with that, right? Because I can see it on you, I can know that you have the spot. See, leprosy ain't nothing but smallpox on steroids. And so you can see the outward comportment, but in church now, you don't know who's infected. Come on and shout glory there. Yeah, in church, you really don't know who's dealing with certain things. At church, everybody come in, they look at good, you got your Stacey Adams on, and all you say is praise the Lord, and I'm supposed to think you godly. And so the leopard's anointing, what it will do is it will cause you to stay clean even when you're around dirty friends. Oh, all y'all lift your hands right now in the name of Jesus. Get off Instagram. Come on, lift your hands right there. Come on, everybody. I prophesy that you will stay clean and you will stay pure around dirty people. People that don't have the spirit you got, come on. Any young people in here that will lift their hands. I prophesy the leopard's anointed over your life. That when you're in school, when you're on the field trip, when you go bowling, when you go to the bar, you will stay clean. Shout hallelujah. It is the anointing to stay clean around dirty people. Ah, glory. Number four, let's go. Let's get out of here. We got about a couple more and then we're gone. 
Number four is the Shama anointing. The Shama anointing is my mother-in-law's favorite anointing. Uh, she would come into church and, you know, I know God is in a place when, when she gets in there and she says, Shama. Have you ever been speaking to God in prayer or speaking in tongues or whatever you were doing in the presence of God and, and these words come out your mouth, Shama. Oh God, uh, the Shama anointing, it lets you know and it illuminates that God is in a place. It is the anointing, watch this, and I prophesy this on everybody who's over 50. The Shama anointing is an anointing of peace. Write it down. Come on. You will remember this. You're going to be the smartest person on your job tomorrow. The Shama anointing is the anointing and the ability to have peace. My grandmother had this anointing, you know. She would come, she would come when I was younger, and I would come into the house, and I would say, Grandma, look at all these envelopes. These are bills and everything. And she would throw them in the corner and say, Child, don't worry about that. I got peace. I got peace that surpasses all understanding. And I said, Grandma, why are you throwing the bills in the corner? She said, God, don't make a way. <laughs> and I said, Okay, you keep on doing that foolishness. <laughs> but she had a peace that our generation just don't have. We're just trying to figure it out, and we want to get there fast and in a hurry. We don't want to sit down and study and learn and grow. But everybody who's over 50, if your hands, if you don't want nobody to know it, I release the spirit of peace on you right now. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to work it out. Your SSI ain't your source. Oh God, you know, your disability ain't your source. But there is a shot anointing that's going to come on you in the midnight hour that say, God, I don't know how you're going to work this out. I don't know how I'm going to get this prescription. But in the midnight hour, I want you to open your mouth and say, Shama. Shama. Number five, let's go. We're almost there. Number five is called the priest anointing. I'm almost on your heels, Pastor Pruitt, with your anointing. The priest anointing, the priest anointing. The priest anointing is the ability, ah oh God, to be in situations that are above your control, but you have power over it. It is the ability to walk in a room, and the room will have an atmosphere, and you can walk in the room, and you don't change to the temperature of the room, but the room changes to the temperature of you. Oh, be not conformed to this world. Y'all don't want to come. Come on now. It, it, is the, it, is, it is where you will place your feet. Yeah. I'm almost at my text. That every place your foot treads upon, God will bless it. That's what this priest anointing is. Some of you will walk into places tomorrow, Monday morning, and the rules will change because you stepped in there. And they will look at you. Wake up and look at me, Zion. And they will look at you and say, there's something different about you. Ah, oh, there's something else on your life. There's something else. You've been somewhere. You've heard something. It's because you have come into contact with what is known as the priest anointing. That when you go into your job, when you go into your house, you ain't got to yell at the kids. You sit down, be still. You ain't got to tell your husband go to church. You ain't got to do nothing but sit down and be still because the priest anointing is going to rise up out of you and it's going to cause the waters to be still at your house. Anybody receive that? Hey, glory. Number six. Receive this now. Any leaders and senior leaders in the room is called the king's anointing. Now, the king's anointing is, 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 is special because very few have it. It's, 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 it's an anointing that, that, that your pastor has. And very few, many chase after it, but they can't reach it because it takes a level of consecration and purity. Your heart got to be right. The king's anointing, write this down, it is a territorial anointing. It is an anointing where God gives great men or women of God territory. Or he gives him ruler and stewardship over territories. So you will go to certain cities and certain places when traveling. And wisdom would tell you that if you want to affect change in that area, you don't just open up a storefront and start moving. God called me to do it. 
Wisdom will tell you, you go and talk to the kings first. Amen. Right? Amen. When other foreign leaders come to this country, they don't just come here and, and, and go on tours. I want to see New York and LA. You know where they go first? They go to Washington, D.C. All right. And they go to the White House. And they sit with the king who has ruler over the country for that time first. And the king's anointing, it is, it is the anointing that, that, that when the devil is, is after you, the king's anointing will rise up on whoever you're under. That's why it's important to have a pastor. But I'll leave it alone, all right? Whoever you're under, the king's anointing will come on them and they can go into prayer and to intercession for you. Are you listening to me? The king's anointing. The king's anointing is very strong. Certain people, when you go into certain places, when you go into Wisconsin in that territory, there's a man by the name of Bishop Daryl Hines. They have a king's anointing over that area. You know, when you went to Memphis years ago, they said you couldn't go into Memphis and not go in and at least visit Bishop uh, G. E. Patterson. These great men and women of God that have king's anointing. It's not that they own the place, it's because God has touched their heart and they are his mouthpiece. And they release words that your life can be changed. Revelation stuff here, okay? This is the king's anointing. Let's go to number seven. Let's get out of here. I wrote this down. It is, is an anointing that rests on everybody in this room. And then we're going to go up in a trouble. It is the imperial anointing. The imperial. I believe it's I M P E R I A L. Did I get that right? I A L? Yeah. I learned something in Central State. <laughs> You went to college to learn how to spell. Don't judge me. All right? <laughs> the imperial anointing. I got about six minutes to get out of here. The imperial anointing is the ability to stay alive even while haters try to kill you. Well, uh, 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 yeah, I feel the weight of God on this. Just wave at me if you had somebody talk about you, yeah. made up lies on you. Listen, you walked in a room and they shut up, you did. Oh. I knew you was talking about me. Ah, uh, yeah. Wave your hands if you've ever had a sister-in-law, a mother-in-law, father. Wave your hand. You had a boss, a co-worker. They talked to you like you had a, like they had a tail. They, 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 watch this. The imperial anointing is the ability to stay alive. Oh, God, while people are trying to kill you. John 10, 18 says, no man takes my life. Oh God, he says, but I lay it down. Nobody has control over your destiny. If God said it, it's going to come to pass because there is an imperial anointing that is on your life. Would you just touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you look mighty imperial. Come on, touch somebody who went out last night and they stayed up this morning and they had a trouble and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Come on, tell somebody, say, neighbor, there is an imperial anointing that's on your life. Jesus Christ had an imperial anointing ah, because over 2,000 years ago, let's have church now, when they thought they were going to kill our Savior, he played mind games with him. And he said, listen, no man takes my life, but I lay it down. Oh, God, but I got all power to pick it up in three days. there. I asked God a question. Here we go. I said, God, if they got all of these anointings, I said, where is the anointing? I said, God, listen, I can't just give them class A and class B and give them this and give them that, God. I got to locate their anointing for them. Somebody just talk back to me and say, yes, Lord. I said, God, where is their anointing. I said, Lord, where is the anointing? Can I tell you what God told me the anointing is? Y'all ain't going to believe it. God told me the anointing is stored in your bones. Watch this. I said, the, the, the oil and the anointing of God is in my bones. He said, yeah, it's in your bones. I said, God, I don't believe none of that. You have to prove it to me through the word of God. He said, okay, watch this. He said, remember when God told them to take Joseph's bones back to Canaan. And your Bible says that everywhere they took Joseph's bones, 
they receive victory over every enemy. He had so much anointing in his bones that when they would take Joseph's body back to every land, they didn't have to fight the anointed fight for him. And that's what I prophesy. I prophesy that the anointing that's in your bones will be so powerful that when you go into places, you ain't got to open up your mouth, but the anointing will come out of your bones and you shall see victory. Oh God, help me here. I said, okay, God, that's just Joseph. Show me somebody else. He said, remember Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah was a discouraged pastor and Jeremiah was willing to throw in the tie and he went to a cave and Jeremiah said they don't show up on time they don't come to Bible class I quit but then Jeremiah got into a corner Pastor Pruitt and he said I would quit y'all don't want to have church Jeremiah said I would give up but it's just like shut up in my it's just like fire shut up in my I said, okay, okay, I get it now, I get it now. Jeremiah had the anointing in his bones. Eh? I said, but you got to show me, show me some more, God. And this is our text this morning. Eh? He said, now remember when Elijah, eh? when Elijah died, eh? Eli Elijah died, eh? and he did not want to leave his anointing here, oh, in the grave with him. Eh? And so he asked his son, eh? he said, Elijah, he said, what do you want from me? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of the anointing. And he said, so is it so. And he got the anointing at the Jordan River. But then Elisha was on the scene. And he didn't have anybody to pour his anointing into. He didn't have anybody that wanted to study. He didn't have anybody that wanted to be obedient. That wanted to sit at the feet of the king. And so Elisha died. And when Elisha died, they took him into a tomb and laid him there. Oh, but a story I found in this book that says on the battlefield, there was a man that died. And when they took the man into the tomb of Elisha, they took him and they threw him in there. And the story says that when they threw him in the tomb, they said the man bones laid on Elisha's bones. And the Bible says the man stood up. Did y'all read it? He said the man stood up. Oh, somebody just stand up. Huh? And just stand up there. Huh? If you got the anointing in your bones, huh? you ought to stand up in this room. Huh? The Bible says huh? that which was dead came alive. Huh? The Bible says huh? that which was dead came alive. Huh? And I asked God a question. Huh? I said, why did he get up, God? Huh? He said, because Elisha died with his anointing. Huh? And when the man touched his bones, huh? It was so much anointing uh, that the bones uh, had so much oil in them. Uh, the man stood up because uh, he couldn't contain it. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, God, that's all good. But everything in the Bible can be located with Jesus. I said, show me it in Jesus. He said, okay, I showed you Jeremiah. I showed you Elisha and Elijah. I showed you, but let me show you Jesus. The prophecy was given. Y'all don't want to go with me. The prophecy was given that not one bone of his body should be broken. Y'all don't want to go. Come on, here you go, sir. The prophecy was given that not one bone of his body huh, should be broken. Huh? And I asked God a question. Huh? Give me 10 seconds and we go. Huh? I said, God, why did they not break his bones? Huh? It was custom for them huh, that when they would kill and crucify, huh, they would break the bones huh, to make sure they would go. Huh? And so I said, God, why didn't they break the bones? Huh? He said, because remember what I told you, don't die with your anointing. Huh? He said there was so much anointing yeah, in Jesus Christ yeah, that if they would have broke the bones, yeah, all of the oil yeah, would have oozed out of his body yeah, and it would have cracked the earth. Yeah. Pull on somebody and let's go have church and say, neighbor, yeah, don't die with your anointing. Yeah. Give it to your kids. Yeah. Give it to your co-workers. Yeah. Give it to your leaders. Yeah. Tell somebody, come on and go with me for a minute. Tell somebody, yeah, don't die. Show a noise.
you. Don't die with what Jesus gave you. He gave you the power. 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 He gave you the power to tread over serpents and tread over scorpions. He gave you the power to be a ruler over every darkness. He gave you the power over peer pressure. He gave you the power over marijuana. He gave you the power over alcohol. He gave you the power. Slap somebody a hot and say, neighbor, don't die with your Lord. Do me a favor while we're right there. I want you to shake somebody. Put your hand on their shoulder and shake them like they're crazy. Come on, wake them up and tell everybody in the balcony to stand up. Shake them and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Don't you die with your anointing. You gotta share that oil. You gotta share that glory. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. And say, neighbor, as long as I live, there shall be an anointing. There shall be release over my family, over my church, over my job. Don't die with your anointing. You got to spread it. Get out of your pew for a second. Come on. Let's unnerve the devil. Walk over to somebody. All y'all go over there. Walk over to somebody. Grab them by the hand. Come on. Come on and get out of the pew. And just squeeze your anointing. Squeeze your anointing. All over this room. 